Hello friends, welcome to this moment with Mark and his Bible. It's the first of the month, it's the first of November, and here I am with just a few thoughts about a particular phrase that we find in the Bible, and today I've got my Bible open to possibly the most familiar part of our Bible. It's in the Psalms, and it's Psalm 23. Now, what can I possibly say about Psalm 23 that you haven't already heard? Well, what I want to do uh, at this time of year is hone in on one particular phrase that you see in verse four. So do open your Bible, even though you're familiar with Psalm 23, and have a look at verse four. By all means, pause the video at this point while you do that, and then come back to me in a moment. So verse four of Psalm 23. It contains this line, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, writes the psalmist. It's a statement both of comfort and of defiance. With God by our side, we can go forward even in difficult times. We can face death or danger because his son Jesus has overcome both on our behalf. So Psalm 23, verse 4 I will fear no evil. Let's spend a few minutes as we contemplate both hope and Halloween. Because this past week, the houses and front gardens of many a home in our neighbourhoods has been sprouting up all manner of ghoulish tat from the local pound shop, including plastic bats and fake spider webs, all in anticipation of the one time in the year when children and teenagers splattered in fake blood wander our streets and knock on our doors. Ghosts, ghouls and goblins will trot around holding a parent's hand. But this is not just a for the kids moment in the year, as some grumpy geezers used to refer to Christmas as. Rocky horror vamps have been present on our TV screens for the several for the last few weeks. And pumpkins, pumpkins are being sold from white vans near every busy road junction that I drive through and not just because you can make soup from pumpkins. It's the one time of the year when it seems to be cool to be a serial killer, or at least to dress up like one. It's Halloween. But why has this celebration of this festival, the spooky and the bizarre, taken hold in the UK in the last two decades or so? It has the feel of a transplanted tradition, one that comes from somewhere else, the United States, and doesn't feel as if it belongs in our local soil. Annual customs like Remembrance Day, Christmas Day, St David's Day, tend to point to a deep past. They are a way of recalling and handing on particular values that our culture cherishes. Secular people have tended to find a way of adapting religious festivals like Christmas and Easter for their own benefits. Just as Christians have sometimes made use of pre-existing holidays and celebrations that they found and imbued them with Christian meaning. But there is something weird about Halloween in the UK. We don't have a cultural memory of it. So why are we do what are we doing when it's celebrated? As the night before All Saints Day, it's a festival with deeply religious roots. Originally, this was, and still is, a time of remembering departed saints and martyrs of the church, and also our loved ones too. It's a celebration of life beyond death, not in fear of ghosts, but in hope of the resurrection. Christians remind each other to hope in God and not to fear death. That's where the sense of fun bit comes in. There's a reason to laugh at the horrid and the spooky, since because of Jesus Christ, these no longer have any power over us. Dressing up in costumes, going door to door and playing pranks, most likely emerged from Scotland and Ireland. And these practices then took shape in North America in the 19th century, where they became more commercialized, like Christmas, and also became accepted by people of diverse ethnicities and faiths. Halloween invites us to face our fears and to teach our children not to be afraid. As a community, we are notorious for simultaneously overprotecting our children 
and making them deeply anxious. We do not now fear ghosts and goblins, but we do have many fears. We have the fear of insignificance, the fear of poverty, the fear of cancer, the fear of loneliness. We fear environmental catastrophes, which is one of the less helpful reasons for praying for COP26, that it would achieve some meaningful outcomes. But there is one fear above all that still lingers. Most of all, we still fear death. The anthropologist Ernest Becker once wrote, the idea of death and the fear of it haunts the human like nothing else. But does plastic tat and sugar sweets really help us to face what we and our children fear? Halloween, in its commercialized form, can be the avoidance rather than the, an acknowledgement. The kids, after all, don't dress up as melting ice caps or extinct, extinct species or cancerous growths. While Halloween laughs, its laughter is nervous. It's all bravado, a manageable version of our fears, even though this is perhaps better than not seeing and facing our fears at all. But is that all that we offer people? As a community, we really need to be better at talking about our fears than we are. But we could also go back to the origins of Halloween and find something in which to hope, which is why Halloween, yesterday, still needs today, the 1st of November, All Saints Day. Yes, this verse and this, this line in Psalm 23, I will fear no evil, is a statement both of comfort and of defiance. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, Christians believe the promise that ultimately we will not die forever, but live. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's also in Psalm 23. Well, thanks very much for spending a few moments with me. Do take care and God bless. See you again soon.